two, one. This is Chargers Unleashed Podcast. Here are your hosts, Dan Wolfenstein and Jake Hefner. Welcome to another edition of Chargers Unleashed. Jake Hefner and Dan Wolkenstein here with you from the LA Football Network. Today's show, of course, being brought to you by UFC Fin Temecula, Golden Road Brewery, Charger, Bolt Family, Tick Pick, and Bet Online. If this is your first time watching the show, trust me, fans, you are in for a treat today. You can, of course, hit that like and subscribe button on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and of course, on Apple and Spotify, wherever you choose to digest your weekly NFL podcast. Dan Wolgenstein, the 2022 NFL Draft is officially in the books, but almost one week to the day from a certain individual being picked. 17th Mm. overall Mm. couldn't think of a better way to have this show without a special special guest dan wolkenstein please if you would yes jake number 17 overall in the 2022 nfl draft mr zion johnson has been gracious enough to stop by and talk a little chargers football cannot wait for this discussion such a great pick for the chargers bolt fans are you ingratiated him with the lightning bolt on draft night Cannot wait for you guys to hear this episode. Zion Johnson, Chargers Unleashed, coming up. All right, Bolt fam, your newest Los Angeles Charger, future Mahler in the run game, and Justin Herbert protector, number 17 overall in the 2022 NFL Draft. Mr. Zion Johnson has been gracious enough to come on the show and talk a little Chargers football. Zion, welcome to the Chargers. Welcome to LA and the Bolt fam. How you doing? Hey, thanks for having me, and you know I'm glad to be here. I'm really excited. Uh, I got to go out to L.A. for a day, my first time in L.A., got to see the stadium, you know, go to the practice facility. Uh, I got to see the model of the new one they're actually building. And I'm just ex- excited for, you know, everything to come and can't wait to get out there for rookie minicamp next week. A, a little different than Boston, right? You go from like the frigid cold and uh, <laughs> snow and lobster rolls to like palm trees and, you know, the glitz and glamour. <laughs> well, you know, I spent some time at school in North Carolina and then a lot of my family's from Florida. I know it's a different type of heat. You know, we get a lot of we get the oh, yeah. heat and out there it's the sun heat. But uh yeah, I mean I like I like the I like the sun and you know I'm I'm just excited to get out there and have some uh you know nice weather for a change. <laughs> oh I'm sure. I'm sure. Winters in California a little different than winters in New England. Um well, so sure. look Chargers fans are so excited to have you on this team. We're going to talk about all kinds of stuff. So excited to have you on. We'll go into kind of what Chargers fans should expect to see from Zion Johnson. What's going to be like to protect Justin Herbert, maybe get into some X's and O's, maybe some first impressions of the team, get to know you a little bit more on and off the field. But let's start with Thursday night. Okay. NFL draft night one. Take us into the Johnson family, like draft celebrations. Like what were, what were some of the conversations you were having that night while waiting for the pick? Like, How did you celebrate with the family? Like, who was most excited? Like, what was that day like for you and the family? And what were some of the key takeaways you had? I mean, it was really exciting. You know, my mom was super excited. Um, uh, You know, she was very emotional and just happy for me. And, um, you know, because it's been a long journey through, you know, Davidson, my late start through Boston College. And, you know, she's been with me the whole time. So it was a, a great moment for her as well as it was for me. You know, I I had a lot of people come, like Coach Halfley from BC came and, uh, you know, watched me get drafted. Um, You know, my uncle and my aunt were there as well. And, you know, afterwards, you know, after I did some media and went to the draft party, which was awesome to see the fans and how excited they were, um, you know, I was able to go back to the hotel, see them. And, uh, you know, they were just all happy and excited. And um, it, it was really a cool experience, a once in a lifetime day. For sure. And I would imagine, you know, seeing that with your mom and being able to kind of you know what you guys have gone through and what she sacrificed for you. Like I can imagine that's kind of bittersweet to kind of see her all of a sudden freak out and have those happy tears of joy. I saw the video of her and the video to you. And um, it's a special moment, man. Uh, and I'm excited for you. It, it, it's okay. So I noticed you, you talked about the Chargers fans. Um, I noticed the huge bolt chain that you had that you got from the inner circle. Yeah. Do you still have it? What were your first impressions of the bolt fam? I don't know if you're even familiar with the Bolt fam expression, but we're all family here. Uh, what do you think so far? Well, I didn't know before, but I know now. I know. 
And uh, it, I think it's upstairs, like my mom has it. But uh, yeah, so I, I went out in the crowd to take a picture and uh, one of the fans just put it on my neck and I was like, this is pretty cool. And I just wore it the rest of the day. <laughs> oh, there it is. Love it. Um, so you're now a Charger. Talk to us about some of the conversations you've had so far with some of your teammates, whether it's through text or on the phone. Um, like, What are some highlights or maybe insights that you've had that maybe have stood out to you uh, as you've kind of gotten acquainted with some of your teammates? Well, it's been limited. Uh, you know, a few, some of the teammates reached out to me and said, you know, just congratulations. And, you know, uh, we're excited to have you. And, you know, I pretty much just said, told them, you know, I'm excited to work with them and for the opportunity. But I'm really excited for, you know, in the coming weeks, getting to have formal introductions, see them one on one, because it's a little different meeting a person, you know, in person than through tech. So, were there were there any like awkward like conversations like for example last year we talked to Rashawn Slater and he was mentioning how when he got introduced to Justin Justin Herbert he ended up calling him and he's like hey this is Justin and Rashawn was like hey uh, I, I know you who you are <laughs> like were there yeah. any like funny moments where you were like I can't believe this is real like I got, this, is, this is my life so uh, when Justin texted me like he, he was like. Hello, my name is Justin Herbert, the quarterback <laughs> for the Chargers. Blah, blah, blah. I was like, yes, I, I know who Justin Herbert is. Like, you don't have to give me the full <laughs> chat. That was kind of funny. But other than that, you know, that, that's about it. That was. I love it. Now, Zion, just as you mentioned a second ago, as you did on draft now, you were talking about all the sacrifices that your mom has made for you throughout your journey, obviously now getting to the NFL. And I've read about all the little pieces, um, you know, being very close to Christian Jarrett all the time, the bus driver bringing you home from, from golf practice, but your mom being the main influencer of really pushing you to that next level of going through football. Tell me just outside of, of her influence, what are some self-motivating factors for you? What's your why when you step out there on the football field? I would say it, it's really changed throughout the years. At first, uh, one of the things I really enjoyed at first about football was just, and I still do today, is just the ability to improve yourself through hard work. You know, being able to, you know, I struggled a lot at first and was, you know, I was 225 playing tackle. So to continue to work on my technique and, you know, learn the X's and O's and see myself improve, that was something I liked. You know, early on, you know, not so much now, but, you know, I had a lot of people that doubted me you know, being uh, undersized and not have, having played football a lot. So that really drove me to prove to others, but also to myself that, you know, I could be a good football player and get on the field. But the biggest one I'd say for me now is the camaraderie. You know, the offensive line room at Boston College was really tight. And, you know, we would hang out, you know, we had a close relationship. And that's one of the things about football I love the most. And you just mentioned it a second ago, the X's and O's. I know it's early. We're almost a week removed from the first night of the draft. Have you gotten a chance to get into the X and O's yet? Um, uh, and then what are the first things that you're expecting to kind of get into when you when you get to rookie mini camps? So, no, I haven't gotten the playbook yet. Uh, I talked to Coach, and he said, you know, we'll, we'll get it to you when, when, when you get out of here for a rookie mini camp. But, you know, I had the opportunity to talk to Coach Nugent about some of the things that – um, you know, we'll be doing and I'm just very optimistic and, you know, I think I'll pick it up pretty quickly and I'm just excited for the opportunity. So you got Rashawn Slater, Corey Lindsley, Matt Filer all on this line and then they charges pick Zion Johnson. You know, what's it like coming into a situation with like an offensive line group that already is pretty not only tight knit, but like pretty skilled and you got an all pro rookie. You got Corey Lindsley, arguably the best center in football, Matt Filer. And now you, like, what's that like going into a situation? I feel like it couldn't have been a better situation for you. Yeah, it's awesome because uh, it's exciting to go in a room, you know, with guys that you can kind of learn from, you know, talk to. And, if you know, you know, especially guys like Corey Lindsley and Matt Byler who played quite a while and have some things that, you know, they can teach you, you know, because throughout my career, you know, I've never been the young guy. You know, my, when I came into Davidson, they brought in 10 freshman offensive linemen. So it was like I've always been growing with the guys around me. But to, to be in a room full of guys with experience that, you know, you can learn certain things and how they conduct themselves, their routine. You know, I'm, I'm very excited for that opportunity. Now, preview. Um, I know you're going to be talking to Rashawn Slater a ton. You guys are probably going to be best friends by the end of this. He just came in a year prior to you. 
Um, if there is one question that you're looking forward to asking him, because he kind of went through this one year prior to you as an offensive lineman, like what's the one question that you would ask him specifically as to like how he did or what, what would you ask for advice from him? I'd probably ask him about his routine, like how he approaches each day. What are things that he makes sure he does every day? You know, what like those certain things, because, you know, to play as well as he did, he must be doing something right in terms of his t- in terms of his uh, routine. So. Yep. Um, all right. You, you talked about the coaching staff a little bit. Uh, you mentioned, I believe it was Coach Staley you had talked about. Um, what are kind of your first impressions of the coaching staff, whether it's Nugent, Staley? Uh, how does it come kind of compare or contrast what you had at Boston College? Um, you know, I, I really like Coach Staley from, you know, the bit I've talked to him. Um, he he kind of reminds me of Coach Halfley a bit because, um, you know, just like when he, when he speaks to you, when he talks, I mean, it's like, it encaptures you, you listen. And, you know, I, I really like the vision he has for the team. And, you know, he, from, from the bit I've talked to him, you know, he sounds like a guy that, you know, you just want to follow. And then, you know, talk, talking with coach Nugent, you know, I, I talked about some of the things he believes in terms of technique and, you know, how he works with offensive linemen. And, you know, I'm just very excited to, to learn some things from him and, you know, um, yeah, I think uh, I'm in a great situation with the, with those two guys. So now, Zion, I know everything's kind of fluid right now because it's it's still kind of undetermined what the Chargers' offensive line is fully going to look like by the time that we hit September. Whether they're going to have you on the left side, the right side, I know everything that Coach Staley has said thus far is that he is penciling you on the right. Is there anybody when you look at in the offensive line that you're really excited to play alongside? Or maybe even against. I know you and your new teammate Otito had a little bit of a rivalry came come senior bowl week. So you're looking to kind of renew that a little bit. Um, I would say I'm I'm excited to play next to to, to Corey Lindsley. Really all those guys, but you know, with him and the experience he has and you know, I, I actually trained with uh Josh Sitton throughout this whole process and you know, he he's talked about him, you know, when he was earlier in his career and how he works and those sort of things. To play next to him, I think, you know, will help me elevate myself as well as a player. And then, yeah, on the defensive side, you know, even though they're ends, you know, Khalil Mack and, and Joey Bosa, you know, iron sharp is iron. And to go against guys like that will only make you better. So That was perfect. That was actually going to be my next question, because when you talk about veteran guys like that, that, as you mentioned, iron sharpens iron for any young player to come in and train with these guys, learn from them, even from an offensive lineman standpoint, to better your craft. Um, what's kind of the things that have you gotten a chance to even dissect their game a little bit to say like, okay, this is how I can get better. Have they, have they kind of alluded anything to you as far as, Hey, this is where we're going to put you through. <laughs> um, not really. I haven't had much contact contact with them. Of course, like I watch football. So I, you know, I know some of the things that they do in terms of like, you know, some of their go-to pass rush moves and that sort of thing. You know, I played tackle a year so. You know, I have brief experience of watching some of those guys, but more so, you know, I watch more inside guys uh, when it comes to NFL tape. So, um, you know, yeah, that's that's about it. But I've had I haven't really had any interactions with them yet, but I'm excited to, you know, you know, get better going against, you know, the best of the best. Let's transition a little bit from the football field. Let's talk about your love for golf for just a second. You're big into golf. What are some traits, lessons that you think that could translate from the fairways to the football field? I always say this, but golf is a frustrating game. You know, it's a, it's a game where you have you have your good days, you have your bad days. You know, you have your days where everything, you know, hitting just how you want it to, and some days where you know you just can't hit the ball straight, no matter what you do. And you know that translates to football because it, it 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 causes you to you know be consistent. And continue to go out and work on your technique, you know, whether you're offensive line or D line or anywhere in football, it teaches you, you know, consistency and whether you have, you know, a good day, you know, whether we're talking about pass rush or whatever, or you have a bad day and you make a mistake, you know, as long as you continue to work on these things, you're only going to get better. We're, we're wrapping up with uh, Zion Johnson here. Uh, if you want to ask Jake about how you can get a road rash while playing golf, uh, we got plenty of story time for you. Uh, <laughs> we know how to not hit the ball wow. straight. I'll tell you that much. Great story uh, to bring up. <laughs> you're welcome, Jake. Um, all right. So you're a smart guy. You, you went to school for cybersecurity. Obviously, football worked out for you just fine. You're in the NFL. You don't need to worry about it for a while. 
But like, what got you into cybersecurity? And I guess, I don't know if anybody's asked you this, but like, what type of career would you see yourself in cybersecurity? Like, if football wasn't there, maybe after football, like, what, what intrigues you about it? What do you see yourself doing with it? So the reason I chose it is I, I had finished my undergrad in computer science and I was really into uh, like web programming and um, just looking at the options I had at the school that, you know, most of our grad football guys um, went to the Wood School, cybersecurity seemed like the most interesting option to me. And, um, you know, that's why I chose it. And, you know, I don't regret that decision at all. And uh, in terms of career, you know, there's tons of different fields in cybersecurity. You know, you could look at it from the risk management side, which I'm very interested in, or from the, uh, you know, like database management or security side. Um, honestly, for me, like every industry has some sort of cybersecurity role. I, you know, I think, you know, I, I would just have to figure out what that is. But, you know, I, I wouldn't rule out for myself, you know, uh, continuing to work in the football world as well, just because, you know, my love of the game, you know, I could see myself, you know, you know, coaching or, you know, you know, talking about football in, in any way. Um, but, you know, yeah, there's a lot of opportunities and, you know, realities for me in terms of, you know, what I could do, but, you know, my plan is to play as long as I can and then figure all that stuff out later. <laughs> Yeah, I, and I think the Chargers are also into risk management, bringing you in to protect the crown jewel, Justin Herbert, bringing everybody in here to help get this team to the next level. Yes. Um, have you, real quick, have you had have you had a thoughts about like what this team looked like last year? Like, did you watch the Chargers? Like, what was your kind of first impressions of the team when you found out that it was LA calling you? I mean, I was excited because I mean, everybody knows about the firepower the Chargers have on offense. You know, across the board. You know, starting with that quarterback, Justin Herbert. And, uh, you know, I, I was just excited and I thought in my mind, like, there's no better situation I could have, you know, gone into. And I'm just, uh, you know, very thankful and happy for that, for the opportunity. So, Love it. All right. Uh, two more questions for you, Zion. Uh, you went to Boston College. I actually grew up in New England for a bit, uh, younger years. Uh, a teammate of yours at BC, Brandon Sebastian, also mm -hmm. signed by the Chargers as a undrafted free agent. Has to be pretty special joining up with an NFL team and going with a teammate of yours to, right out the gate. Like, what can you tell us about Brandon Sebastian? Have you guys talked about it? Like, what could the Chargers see in him either on or off the field? Yeah, so he, so he, text, he texted me uh, after he got the news. And, you know, that was very exciting to have a guy that I know, you know, going out there in L.A. with me. And, you know. Uh, I would say Brandon is a guy who's improved a lot throughout his time with Coach Hackley. And, uh, you know, he, he's someone who uh, he's going to put the work in. And I'm, I'm just excited to have him out uh, out there with me. And, uh, yeah, you know, for him, just as, as long as he continues to put the work in and learn and develop, you know, the, 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 the heights he can reach, you know, there's no telling how, how high he can go. I always enjoy this because Dan always gives me the harder questions to ask. So I'm actually really excited about this one. But Zion, you mentioned in a recent interview that if you were an Avenger, you'd like you'd liken yourself to you, the Hulk. Mm -hmm. So I have to ask big MCU fans between Dan and I, mm -hmm. what's your favorite Avengers movie? Have you been following up on Moon Knight? And then finally, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness comes out this weekend. Have you gotten your tickets yet? Oh yeah, I got my ticket for Friday. Yeah, yeah, I got my same here. Yes. Um, keep up on Moon Knight. I haven't finished it yet. I haven't like caught up. I'm I'm still three episodes in, but I will. I will get to it. I'll get around to it. And my favorite MCU movie would probably have to be Captain America and the Winter Soldier. Yes. Yeah. Your speaking oh, Jake's language. Love it. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> so, so Zion, fun fact, I, until a year and a half ago, I hadn't seen probably two-thirds of the MCU, and Jake was a huge uh, Avengers fan. And since then, I have watched every one of them in order, chronologically. I'm now, I, honestly, I think I'm at the exact same point as you. I'm now three episodes into Moon Knight, uh, and I'm kind of hooked. I could watch all of them a million times now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, all right, last hard question. Favorite food? Uh, salmon. 
like it's probably boring. I like it like glazed, like with some type of sauce on it. But it's literally like a food I could eat for every meal. Like, and I won't get tired of it. I could eat salmon every night. Okay. Well, now that you're on the West Coast, you got pokey. You can get salmon 18 different ways. So I think you're not going to go starving. <laughs> <laughs> Zion, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. This has been a blast. I uh, hope you had some fun listeners and viewers. Zion, we can't wait to see you ball out at training camp and during the regular season. We'll be out there watching you during the games. Uh, thank you so much for coming on. Enjoy this process, and uh, we'll see you at training camp, all right? Thank you for having me, and you all have a good one. Thank Thanks, you. Zion.